Hey y'all, welcome back to Mirror Expressions. X <laughs> oh, y'all, come on in and let's have some fun tonight. We are reviewing and recapping Married at First Sight Season 15, Episode 9. Are you going to gaslight me? All right, y'all, before we get started, y'all know how we do over here. And drop a mirror in the uh, emoji in the chat if you looked in the mirror today and you feel A1 with what you see looking back at you. Let me grab my mirror because look, I'm feeling good, y'all. And if you're not, I invite you, I encourage you, I implore for you to take whatever avenues that you must to get back to a healthier you. All right, y'all, let's get this train moving because, baby, tonight was good. It was good. It's day 20, three weeks in, right? Morgan and Ben, they working now. Miguel cooking breakfast for, um, uh, yeah, Miguel, he cooking breakfast for Lindy. Kristen and Mitch, they taking the dog for a walk. Stasha's dressing Nate already. <laughs> she like, she literally is just um, about to make some clothes. Um, and Lexus is just, and they, they in the bathroom doing face masks. So, Ben and Morgan. They decided to do redo a first date type of thing, trying to get things back on track for them. And so, uh, uh at this point, it's just kind of like Morgan, just let it, let it, let go and move on. You know what I'm saying? Because you're just gonna keep hindering the relationship for from growing and moving forward. So, anyways, and they decide to have these mermaid lessons where they go to the pool and they put on like a simulated mermaid tail and the instructor is teaching them how to swim in them, right? So it looks like they have fun with that or whatever. So over to Kristen and Mitch. And <laughs> y'all, one lifetime play with us all day and go day. They gonna zoom in on little Luna, getting her freak on with her bed. I said, baby, now they, <laughs> they could have left that out. <laughs> anyway. Mitch is cooking. I hope he don't wash them damn hands. And nasty he is. But he's cooking. So they're discussing their goals, right? So we learned that Mitch, hey, he's gotten a new position at work. And so Kristen is just like, her goals are to have a couple of babies and then move into flipping homes. Well, while she's speaking, Mitch kind of starts acting goofy. Like he's not really just paying her attention. It was like, to the point that she had to ask him, like, are you taking me seriously right now? And you could tell, you know, that she was hella annoyed with him by just her facial expressions. And so he goes on to say that his political views may not line up with her goals. And I'm just like, child, whatever. Then I get this knock at the door that kind of just interrupted that whole scene. So... At this point, you see everybody getting this package at the door. And it's a bottle of wine or champagne in this card. And so, the card says to talk about what it will take or continue to take for, for you to fall in love. And then, it goes on to say that they will meet a special uh, guest expert later on. So, Stasha and Nate, they're discussing things out at the hot tub, right? And they says he's at maybe a Four out of ten, give and take, as far as his feelings and being where he's almost at the point where he can fall in love with her, right? So, Sasha, she's taking a bath. She's surprised that that's the only place he's at, that, that he's not further along than that. And she goes on, uh, oh, well, she asks him, well, how do you, how do I get closer to, to that love? For you to be in love with me. And he says it's just going to take more time. So then Stasha goes on to say that she's more of an 8 out of 10. And so she asks him, well, when was the last time you loved someone? Yeah, why did Ninja say when he was back in high school? So, Nate, you ain't tell me at the age of 34, you have yet to experience a real adult love relationship See, that just fucked more. Let me know you a whole F boy out here in these streets. She then asked him, Well, what would keep you from not falling in love with me? 
And he says, there's not a whole lot that would. Stasha says, I'm not trying to pressure you or anything. And I'm not saying that you have to say you love me by decision day for me to say yes. But that's not what I'm saying. But that is what I'm saying. <laughs> so basically, that's what you're saying, Sasha. That's what you're saying. Don't let the man know what it is. <laughs> anyway, over to Chris and me, she asked him, does he really feel that he's never been in love before, right? Because Mitch is another one that says he's never been in love. I don't see how these grown-ass people talking about they ain't never been in love before. Like, I don't know. That's just unreal to me. Because Mitch, damn near, he is in his 40s. He like 41 like Mitch. Come on. Oh, child. Oh, child. But anyway, he says no. He, he doesn't feel like he has. And, um... Uh, he said he saw things sour between his parents. And I think that's probably part of the reason why he has it. Like, he's carrying that. Like, it's made him afraid to go there with another individual, probably. And that's why he's just not allowed himself to be in love. Um, So, it's just really time for you to break this cycle, Miss. You know what I'm saying? It looks like maybe your brother has. He has a wife and children. You know, all marriages don't have to sour, go south, end in divorce. You know what I'm saying? So, Kristen brings up how he works her nerves sometimes when she's being serious. And so, she brought up the night before. And, you know, how he was. she was trying to tell him about her goals. And he was being silly. So he apologizes basically and they move forward. Over to Alexis and Justice. They're having like a chill kind of evening. They smoking the hookah. They drinking their wine. And so she asked him first about being in love. He mentions that he was with his first uh his first um uh, he was with his first girlfriend, which happened at the age of 20. Like, when he said his first, he meant first everything. It was his first girlfriend, his first time having sex with somebody. So, you know, he says he thought he was in love, but that it wasn't, that she was kind of just taking advantage of him. She dogged him because he was being a yes man. So, Alexis, she, you know, she's trying to figure out, you know, what what's making him be a such a people pleaser um to re to receive love in return and so he just brought up how growing up he didn't really receive love from everybody it was like more one-sided and especially from his father and so he would try different things to please his father in order to get that love that he want and parents you know parents can really do a number on us um Sometimes, you know, normally you, you sometimes you just do get those trash, straight up trash parents. But sometimes you get parents, they're only doing what they've been taught or doing what they feel is best. Um, and not really learning to look at things through a different lens or do things a different way. And how ultimately that can affect, you know, your children. Um, so I just, I hate that, you know, for him, you know, whatever that situation was, it's just never a good thing um, when you experience trauma at the hands of your parents. So anyways, um, but he says that's what kind of made him such a people pleaser. So he asked her, can you tell me how much you love me in this moment? And so she says no. And she brings up, you know, their recent troubles. And how it's just really been hard for her to um, move past that. She wants to, um, she does want to get back though to where they were, like on the honeymoon and she trusted him and having faith in him. But it's just been hard to get back to that place. And y'all, I really, really expected you. <laughs> I thought he was going to start crying. He did. He did, but I really thought in that moment he was going to start crying when she said she can't tell him how much he loves her. So, Justin says that, you know, he had he knows he has to step it up. And that hopefully the moments, the, the trouble moments that they've had 
will just be used as um, things that will help to strengthen their relationship. So Nate and Sasha, they're cooking dinner together now. This after they done got out the little hot tub. And she's talking to him about having measurable goals. And insert. <laughs> Y'all, is it just me? Or was it just me? <laughs> but did they hair look a little faded on the side? Like when they was down in that hot tub, it looked a little bit blacker than what it was looking like in that kitchen. Like, did you get some water on there, some stuff washed out? <laughs> Nate, let me find that you go to the same barber as Chris's pastor from uh, the Atlanta season. <laughs> yeah, baby. Because he stayed dyed up. But anyway, <laughs> so, you know, they start talking about the whole uh, measurable goal thing. And, you know, and she's just like, our goals need to be measurable, and I'm not just talking about financially, right? So they going up and down and sideways about these darn measurable goals. And so she wants them to be beyond, like I said, just a financial thing. She um she's wanting to, especially that emotional aspects. And whereas he just wants to kind of remain surface level. So she's pushing him to dig deep about the L word, right? And he's saying him moving in with her, having a joint bank account with her, and talking about kids, that those are all the ways that he's showing her that he's committed. And I'm just like, well, you moving in with her, that's benefiting you. Y'all having a joint bank account, being that she makes, uh, what, like three times more than you, that's benefiting you. You talking about kids when well, you really don't want kids ain't benefiting nobody because ain't nothing going to be happening. Well, I guess that's benefiting you because you don't really want them. But hey, I can talk about them. So I mean, oh, child, Nate, where, where you at, Nate? Oh, what it? Oh, uh, what it? All right, anyway. Um, <laughs> so I'm like, uh, Nate, yeah, you got to step it up. So anyway, Sasha said, well, I can have anybody do all of those things. And that doesn't mean that they love me. Right. I'm like, Sasha, girl, I'm glad you know, cause Nate don't love you. He don't love you. Don't love you. All right. <laughs> anyway. He tries to end the conversation, right? Saying that they're just going in circle and Sasha's ask, uh, Sasha asking him, well, does he feel attacked? And, you know, he says no, um, that he feels like um, his intentions are being uh, misinterpreted, basically, which is, he, which is uh, what he feels is being a uh, manipulation on her part. Right. So, Stasha says if he doesn't love her by decision day, it will pre it pretty much going to get her pause for the calls to go ahead and say yes. So, it's day 21, right? And Miguel, he meets up with his friend, Steve. And I really don't know why this was in here. Nobody else. We saw nobody else meet up with their friends. And Steve, it ain't like he was talking about nothing to me, no way. So, he brings up the uh insurance conversation that Lindy spoke about while at the party. Now, mind you, him and old girl are the one that asked Lindy had they been having any disagreements. So, Lindy said, yeah, about the insurance and her taking his last name. So, the guy was just like, uh, it made him not like her. Well, not just him. Him and old girl made them not like her. And then... He says, is she uh past the point of being Jekyll and Hyde? Y'all, that really rubbed me the wrong way. It really did. First of all, because you're not around her like that. You don't know her like that. And again, y'all asked her about any disagreements and she was just being honest. So, yeah, I, 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 I ain't like that for him. And so, 
Anyway, he go on to ask uh, Mitch, I mean, Miguel, is he turning a blind eye to the red flags? And Miguel's just like, I don't think so, but, but maybe I am. Anyway, enough of them. So now we see Bitch, he's taking Kristen to do karaoke. He found out that's one of her favorite things to do. And baby, both of them look like a whole day. <laughs> oh, no, go fool. Up in the karaoke booth, karaoke booth. Like, she was just this, and Mitch looked like he was kind of robotting with a mixed in with some. Oh, no. It was like, baby, and both of y'all need to sit y'all. Sit y'all bust down. I mean, it looked like they was having fun, though. It, I, in the great scheme of things, that's that's what's most important. So, uh, baby, Mitch was trying to freestyle rap, and I just said, oh, child. And, but she was loving it. Oh, he can stay on B? And I said, all kinds. <laughs> so, they, they, they sit down. They start eating, and they get to, like, a serious conversation and so he admits to her that uh her wanting to flip houses triggered him because it seems so predatory to him and so she explains that she's not trying to be some huge corporation she just wants to be on reimbursed for the fruits of her labors and i'm just like like Mitch, what do you really expect would you like to just leave these houses to the uh lapidated or or y'all fix them up and give them away for free like i mean make it make sense either one you know what i'm saying so her flipping houses and then selling them i'm i don't i don't get it you know i know he was saying that some people like to take advantage of the poor by doing that but you know sometimes i just think mitch just go overboard and like he just likes to be ornery like oppositional it, it it i don't know i don't know mitch now now i'm trying to refrain from calling you itch babe but you going on down that road now um so anyway she points out how she has been supportive supportive of him and that she would hope to get the same from him so anyway our pops itch babe y'all it did not take long it did not take long he shifts things into this whole huge ass argument. And y'all, you could tell that Kristen, she was trying her best, y'all. She was trying to choose her words wisely. She was, you could see she was refraining. She was holding them hands. She was taking some deep breaths. Like, like you could just really tell that she was trying to keep it kosher. She was trying. And so anyway, um, she uh she agrees with his sentiments, and he told her that um she wasn't being authentic enough. I said, oh. He says that, but then turns around and says he did say she was inauthentic. So you playing semantics now, each bay. That's what you're doing. You're playing semantics. So, baby, Kristen called him out, too. She was like, what are these puppy strings? Like, are you trying to gaslight me? And I was like, yes, Kristen, don't let him walk over you like that. You better go. And so, oh, uh, just because um, one thing, so this is this is Mitch now. He said, just because um, one thing you say is inauthentic doesn't mean that you are inauthentic. I didn't call you inauthentic. And so she basically told him, don't call for me unless I send for you. <laughs> and make sure you have receipts when you come. <laughs> I said, yes, Christy, yes. <laughs> Baby, I'm here for the stand up for yourself, Chris. I'm here for it. And here go itch back. Sorry if you feel feel that that way, but that's how I felt in that moment. Ooh, we itch back. We itch back. I, I thought we were ready to get rid of that night. I thought we were, but apparently we still here. 
we still here. You still got the itch bay down up in you, and, and he's creeping back out. Oh, y'all. Anyway, it's day 22. Y'all, this was this episode was good for me. I had so many notes. I was like, oh, my people's going to get it out tonight. So, anyway, it's day 22. Ben and Morgan, they're discussing love. And Ben says he's never been in love, right? Morgan says she has. And she's just started going on and on and on about this person that she was in love with. And I said, oh, like, okay, it's a difference in saying you were in love and, you know, win and blah, blah, blah. But to keep going on about how good this person was and he did that and he made me feel this way especially when you already you married to another man and you already constantly giving him a hard time like he just has not been able to get close to you at all and yet you over here just rambling off all this good stuff about another man i said paul ben he looked so uncomfortable all he could say was yeah for sure <laughs> It reminded me of uh Ryan from uh the other uh what season was that? Ryan and Claire, for sure. For sure. <laughs> yep, <Yeah>, for sure. <laughs> I said, oh, oh my goodness, okay. Anyway, she sums it up as he was the right person, but at the wrong time. So Ben mentions someone he dated back when he was in college and how Although he didn't love her like that, he felt like things were going that way. Um, and it probably would have ended up that way. But he had a series of unfortunate events. Like, there were several deaths that happened in his family, uh, like back to back. And then I think he said his father had a heart attack or a stroke or something along those lines. His father got sick. And so, basically, it just caused a shift in their relationship like he just was not present as he should have been and I, I don't mean that like physically I'm sure probably physically too but like this emotionally was not there and so it just kind of uh drew them apart until the relationship fizzled out and so um Ben also goes on to mention uh how um that on the honeymoon his it was his insecurity screaming that caused him to act or react in some of the ways that he did and he says because in the asian community you're expected basically to go on and become a doctor and so he struggles with feeling like he's enough and especially where his dad is concerned and so he said he uh in turn with that he ended up projecting his feelings onto Morgan and that that wasn't fair. He said, oh, Ben, you are enough. Ben, you are enough. You are successful. You have accomplished a lot. You're a sweet human being, compassionate and caring. You are enough. Wow. I really love that self-reflection, though, and how he just broke it down to Morgan. I think um, that meant a lot to her too, just to get a different insight on maybe why he overreacted or why he was so, oh, family and finance, family and finance, you know what I'm saying? So anyways, um, he went on to say, you know, that, hey, Morgan, you have daddy issues, but in essence, I have daddy issues as well. Maybe not the exact type of issues, but daddy issues nevertheless. So um I I love I love that. I loved how he just kinda uh uh I'm sorry y'all, I was trying to read my notes. But anyway, I love how he just kinda uh explained that and took accountability. You know what I'm saying? For that. Um anyways. Uh, she validated his feelings. I like that she did that. And in turn, um, he did the same for her. Like, he was just like, you're enough and I'm enough. And that's true. Both of y'all are enough. And I think that that is important for y'all to keep 
continue to say that. Sometimes it's going to take like a daily reminder. I am enough. Y'all, I do daily affirmations if you don't know, but that that is also one. You are enough. I made that one for my goddaughter. I put it up on her special board so that when she woke up every morning, I don't know if she still has it up there, but we did it probably like her sophomore year in high school. She's now a senior. Um, but she, she saw, I am enough because you are just remember that you are enough. So anyways, hopefully they can go and move forward from here. So Stasha and Nate, they went to some kind of cooking class and they're discussing their disagreement from the previous night. And he said that, uh, he felt like she was playing games and that she, <laughs> he felt like she was playing games and that she was being hard headed. Okay. In her confessional, she says that she is holding it together, but that on the inside, she is really on 10. His past relationship comes up, the one he was in for two years and never fell in love. And he says that um, in that relationship, his uh, girlfriend kept giving her ultimatums. And her thing is, um, well, Stasha's thing is, well, uh, you were with this person for that long and you didn't love her. Like, so that could potentially be me. Like, I can be with you and you never fall in love with me. You know what I'm saying? And so, uh, he tells her she has to have faith in him. That he really likes her. Otherwise, he wouldn't have gotten married. And I'm just like, uh, Nate, now you, you married a stranger. So you didn't know if you're going to like that person or not. You was married. You got married so you could go on and get you some more social media influence. <laughs> you wanted that exposure, but <laughs> and you ain't fooling me. Day 33, y'all. 30, I'm sorry, 23. Kristen the bitch. They out there cleaning up the beach. And for some reason, I feel like this was Kristen's idea. And they end up having a picnic on the beach, right? And so, uh, she doesn't want to uh, be made to feel that the person she's with is ungrateful for her. Because she brings a lot to the table. And I'm just like, you're damn right, you do. So, Miss says, okay. And he seems, you know, he seems like he in a better mood today. You know, Notice I call him Mitch, not Itch Bay. So he 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 back to being cool, calm, and collected. So over at Lindy and Miguel's, they're finally getting some darn screen time because up to this point we really have not seen them. And so they're just now talking about their uh uh card that they got at the front door about the love. So both say that um it takes time for them to fall in love. Lindy elaborates um and said that. She likes seeing the worst of a person and not liking it, but still being able to find the good and come back around to where she she's in a good place with them. Miguel said, on the other hand, man, forget all that ish, because if I see the crazy, I'm gone. <laughs> he said, I'll be gone sooner rather than later. I said, oh, Lindy. She was over there looking like, oh, shoot. I have let him see, a bad, I have let him see my crazy, basically. And I was just like, oh, child, yes, you have. But we're going to learn later on that she really doesn't feel like he's seen her crazy. So apparently she gets turned up a lot more than what we've seen. So anyway, she wants him to support her whenever she's emotionally distraught. And not keep score. She says grace and forgiveness is important to a relationship. And I do agree with that. I do. I do agree with that. Um, but, you know, uh, while I feel like it is important, I don't think that that means you have to change, change what you will or what you won't tolerate within a relationship. But, you know, um, your partner does have to have room to grow and know those things that you will and won't tolerate, right? Because nobody's going to come to the table knowing exactly what their partner will or won't, you know, tolerate or put up with. So, again, you have to allow room for that. Um, and that's where grace and forgiveness comes in, I believe. 
Um, anyway, y'all tell me what you think. What do you think? What are your thoughts about that? Do y'all agree with that or no? Put it in the comments. Okay. We day 24. We keeping it moving. He's Justin. He's going to set up a picnic on a beach for him and Alexis. And so she asked him, well, what does a great husband look like to you, right? And he says that being a great husband is being a great listener and a supporter. And she's just like, is that it? <laughs> like, like, you ask the man his thoughts. Like, don't put, don't project your feelings onto him. If that's what he feels, that's what he feels. So she asked him if they weren't married, but just dating, would he still want to date her where they are at this point in their marriage, you know? If it was just a dating relationship, would he still be interested? And he says, yes. <clears throat> he then flips the question on her, like, would you still be interested? And she says, no. She said the new inc Newton incident would have been a straw for her, basically. Um... And when she said no, again, I was really surprised Justin did come with them tears because y'all know how he do. Uh, but anyway, let me leave him alone. And so that was pretty much for them. Then over to Ben, he's done set up a dinner for Morgan. Uh, he's cooked her, what do you say, Asian barbecue? I think that's what he called it. I don't know. But anyway, so... He around there sitting off of a smoke alone, trying to cook her dinner. And <laughs> so, but he's ready to go deep in conversation again. He wants to talk about why he's such a people pleaser. And so, um, he just, you know, he, he talks about why you like, they were the only Asian. So he was kind of singled out with the children and made fun of. And so, from there to get people to like him, he started becoming a, pe a people pleaser. And she said she kind of grew up the same way, but um, mostly it was with her dad. And so Ben was like, well, how did you break away from that? And she said, cutting my dad off basically is what set, what set me free. And so, and then, let me just say this, y'all. Like, there's nothing wrong with setting boundaries in an unhealthy dynamic, right? You know, I listen to a lot of reviews because, you know, I just like to, like, I don't listen to them before I do my own because I don't want any other, anyone else thoughts or opinions kind of jade in mind or give me a new way to look at things. I want y'all to get what I feel off top. Now, I may come around and look at things something a, a different way or different through a different lens, however somebody else may put it out there. But as far as this channel, I want y'all to get the raw first reaction from me. So anyways, I say that to say, like I have heard a lot of people say that, well, she gave her dad an ultimatum, right? And I just really don't think it was an ultimatum as much as it was probably her defining boundaries. And he could not live up to those boundaries. Like, he couldn't match up to them or respect, I'll say that, better word, respect those boundaries that she had in place. And so, from there, she did it, that um, relationship. And sometimes you have to move on. If you're continuing to do something um, and continue to get the same unhealthy outcome, boundaries have to, maybe different boundaries have to be set. And sometimes you do have to move on even um, if it is with a relative, you know, those things are never easy. But sometimes for peace of mind and to become a healthier version of yourself, you have to remove yourself from those obstacles. So anyway, I don't see anything wrong with that because, like I said, we don't know the whole story behind their relationship anyways. But um, I just wanted to put that out there. But anyway, now, one thing, though, she did say that she was completely healed. And I don't believe that. I I don't believe that. We've seen how she's put those walls up with Ben, right? And we've also seen that breakdown that she had with, with Pastor Cal when he came over to speak to the both of them. So those two things alone lets me know that she's not fully healed. But she's trying to say she's fully healed. And that um we uh um uh, Mm. 
And yeah, that was pretty much it. And I think she told Ben that it takes time. I think that's pretty much what she told him. Because he's like, well, how do I get to that place, right? And so, uh, I think she just said it, it takes time. But um, she also does, she does take the time to affirm him. And I like that. I really did. And she says that she will help him as he try to navigate his his way through um, those feelings of being inadequate or not enough, you know? So I like that she said that she would help him and support him through that. I'm sure that meant, you know, a lot for him to know that he has that support from his spouse, right? So it's the night for them to meet the guest expert. At this point, we don't know who the guest expert is. We know that there's supposed to be two different ones. We don't know who's coming, right? And so unbeknownst to the men, all the wives bought them the same shirt to wear, right? I thought that was so cute. It, it was funny. It was funny. I liked it. I liked that they did that. But here go Itch Bay. He's the only one giving pushback. I mean, sounding just like a little bitch, too. Like, I'm like, Itch Bay, have some fun sometimes. Like, he just, no, no, I'm not wearing it. I mean, to the point that, uh, Kristen with a white has to go pull him in the bathroom and tell him the whole story behind it, like that the uh the wives uh the other wives bought it for their husband and there's a joke for all the men to show up, blah blah blah. And he still was like, I'm not gonna wear it. I'm not gonna wear it. <sighs> Some kind of way she gets him into it right though. Because when they all made it to where they had the little uh, meetup, he was in the shirt. But he came in pound like a big ass baby. Here go Mitch. I mean, uh, Kristen. Uh, shirt gate, shirt gate 2022. <laughs> That's gonna be the new hashtag. Hashtag shirt gate 2022. Anyway. Oh. Mitch, he ends up changing his shirt. Like, literally, all he did was wear up there. I think they probably met up on the rooftop or something. I don't know, y'all. He gets up there. He got the shirt on all the five minutes. And he goes and changes the shirt. So, everybody, like, you know, what's up? Why, why you do all that? And here he go. Because I was cold. Mitch, now your ass is not cold. Why you... You sitting up here walking around and you got darn thong sandals, but you cold. Ah, uh, okay. It's right. You really be irking me sometimes. You really do. When you irk me, you really irk me. You know that. Ooh, child. <laughs> then he goes into this long soliloquy why he didn't want to wear the dog on shirt. I was just like, oh my goodness. Oh, child. Anyway. Dr. P shows up, right? So she's there. She's there to help them learn to be more vulnerable with their partners. And so she's provided them with like an emotional wheel. And she's just talking about primary feelings versus uh, secondary feelings. And so she asked the people, well, what does it look like when you're hurt? Justin speaks up first, y'all. He goes on... <laughs> Oh, y'all, this part really took me. He goes on and saying how he knows how to protect his feelings. It's almost like he's bulletproof. <laughs> y'all, the way that took on me. I said, not the cry, baby. Talking about he's bulletproof. <laughs> And manage his feelings. I said, oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. That was funny to me. Y'all, I feel like everybody's facial expression <laughs> lined up to how I felt in that moment too. Like everybody was like <laughs> Not just, you know, you a goddamn liar. <laughs> just then, put down already. Tough skin, where? Who child? He goes on to say, 
He's not bringing any past trauma into his new relationship. And Alexis really wanted to be like that, that meme of uh, <laughs> Candy Burris from Real Housewives of, of Atlanta when she said, lies, the lies. <laughs> I felt like that's what Alexis really wanted to do in that moment. <laughs> So Dr. P says, let me challenge you on it, right? Let me challenge you, Justin. You're really contradicting yourself uh, because what you gave was a trauma response, right? So she goes on and she's trying to explain, you know, what she meant by all that. And he interrupts her like he the darn <laughs> therapist. Calm down, Justin. Calm down. Oh my gosh. Oh. So anyway, he's like, it doesn't stop me from being vulnerable. I'm not afraid of being hurt. So Dr. P asks Alexis, does she buy that at all? <laughs> and Alexis is like, no. <laughs> Y'all sorry, but this was just so funny to me. Here comes Justin. But she doesn't know me. <laughs> so Dr. P says, Alexis, explain why you feel that that way. Honey, she started talking and Justin done took over her whole conversation, y'all. <laughs> like, Justin, where... Where this little takeover spirit coming from? You over talking to the therapist. You over talking your wife. <laughs> oh my goodness. So Alexa says, so now you're talking for me? <laughs> so he goes on to say how he just feels misunderstood. And if he constantly has to explain things like a third, third grader, I said, what? How insulting. Because you're not going to finish. You're not going to talk to me and say you got to explain things like a third grader. Like we not on the same level intellectually. Like, no, nah, I ain't like that, just Now, nah, I ain't like that. You're going a little bit too far. Because then in the, in the next breath, he says he's not good at explaining himself. Make it make sense, Justin. This explains why you say you feel like you got to go in a circle three times just for what you trying to say to come across. Effective communication is not just on the receiver. It's on the sender's job. It, on the sender's, uh, it's part of the sender's responsibility as well. So if you have a problem expressing yourself, then just maybe you are the reason you feel like you gotta talk like a third grader or go around a circle three times to get it get your message across. Oh child, it couldn't be me. Cause and I'm gonna say now Lexa, she did, she responded very well. Cause like I said, it couldn't be me. Now after that, I, I don't think I would have said things as well as she did. <laughs> I give you your props, girl. I give you your props. So her response was, she said that him shutting down doesn't help her to understand where he's coming from. It doesn't help her to help him to help them. And everybody's like, okay, Lex, okay. Like she just a spit a, spit a word. No, but she did. I, I like what she said. It doesn't help her to help him to help them. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, moving on, because they're going couple by couple. So Dr. P goes to Kristen and Mitch. And Kristen said, you know, as far as her emotion, she's toggling between surprised and astonished. So she's looking at the little motion wheel. And so that's what she says. And she brings up the uh the shirt gate. Shirt gate 2022. Hashtag shirt gate 2022. <laughs> so she brings that up. And Mitch has to 
tied it all back in with him being an environmentalist. And so, I was like, oh, Mitch, I get tired of you and all that. So, Mitch, I mean, Peter asked him, well, was it a controlled thing? And he says that um, he's not going to be a pushover, basically. And so, Peter asked, well, what about compromising? He didn't really have much to say about that other than, again, he's not going to be a pushover. So, then Dr. Peter asked Kristen, well, do you feel like you're losing yourself? And and, and she is. And um, I'm glad she realized that because she did. She said that. She said she's the one always bendy. And um, and that is it's just a struggle. We do. We always see her bendy. And we really never see anything from Mitch as far as a compromise or bending for what she wants. Like what are her needs and her de desires that you're fulfilling? You know what I'm saying? So we really never get to see that from him. It's always from her. And so... Morgan and Ben are up. And so Morgan said that as far as the emotion wheel, that they were in the red on the wheel, but were moving more into the yellow. And she said that she likes compliments, but Ben is not good at giving them. He comes more across to her like she's a bro than she is his wife. Like, uh, she, he, for example, he told her she's icy or she's dripping. Or something like that versus saying you're beautiful. Like being now, it seems like you're just trying to fit into somebody you're not. Or like some, this group. Like you're trying to assume this identity that just is not you. Because it don't even fit in with your personality. But anyway, that's just my thoughts. Oh, uh, So, Lindy brings up wanting Miguel to see her crazy side. And how he hasn't seen it yet. And I'm just like, that Lindy, we done all seen it. Quit playing with us, Lindy. <laughs> so Dr. P was like, Well, what do you uh what do you mean? She was like, you know, with me being overly emotional. Again, Lindy, stop lying to yourself, girl. <laughs> We did not say you be overly emotional. <laughs> like you to cuss that man up and down and put a whole scenario together about you being in the street here by a car. Girl, stop, girl. So Dr. P asked him, like, or what asked Lindy, is she holding back? And she said, yes, yeah, she's holding back out of respect. And um, it's because she doesn't feel safe enough to be her authentic self. And have him to still choose her, basically, is what she said. So, it's Sasha next turn. And Sasha, baby, she just started rattling, rattling off all the adjectives, baby. She said she feels lonely. She feels vulnerable. She feels isolated. She feels abandoned. She feels sad. Like, I don't know if anything what else was said, but all we saw were, like, negative feelings that she said. And so she says she came into this marriage all in and then she feels like Nate is imagining her energy, right? So Nate is looking at her like, what the hell? Oh, y'all, with his little brain, his two little brains just sticking out like this. I, I cannot take him seriously with them brains, y'all. But anyway, <laughs> she says, oh, um, so, I'm sorry, he said that he's taking actions to show her that he's all in, like, signing up for therapy. Um, he tells her he needs her to believe him when he says he's all in, because if he, if it's, if, if he's, uh, if she doesn't start to believe him, he's going to start to feel like he's not being appreciated and he's going to want to give up, right? And so, he said that, um... That's why, oh, no, no, no. He ended it. He said, and basically, that's it. That's all I got to say. And that's why I'm disappointed. Baby, what he say there for? I think it was the whole, and I'm disappointed part, right? Uh, Because, baby, cue the waterworks. So, Stasha started crying, right? And she said, I don't want to give up, but I have to think that, she said, I have to think about, in the long run, how long do I have to wait for you to catch up? And I felt that, y'all. I did. I felt that because 
I've been in a relationship where I've had that same thought, like I'm in a car, I feel like I'm in a car looking in the rear view mirror, waiting on my partner to catch up. And it's not a good feeling. And I'm not just talking about emotionally, like I'm talking, it was like multifaceted. And it's like, I'm just waiting for my partner to catch up. No matter how slow I may have sold that car down, short of stopping it they were never catching up. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah, I felt that. I I felt that deeply. Because at the same time, you ain't on somebody else to catch up. You don't want to stop progressing in your own life and the things that you're trying to accomplish. Waiting on a partner that's kind of not doing it for you. All right. Um, <clears throat> anyways. Oh, uh, Sasha and Nate, so this is later on. This is after they meet and they're back in their apartment. So they're they're talking on the couch. And he said um, he's irritated because she needed to see action. That's what she told him. And he said that's what he's been doing. But he feels like even his actions don't mean anything. He's like, you said words don't mean anything. I need to see action. I'm showing you action. And that doesn't seem to mean anything to you either. So she said um, she used all the words that she gave while at the therapist because they were with the therapist and she was trying to convey to her the feelings that she had been feeling that entire week, not particularly just in that moment. She wanted to, to give a snapshot of, you know, all the things that they had been dealing with. So baby, and they pulled their rug on her. He said, you said, I feel, not I felt. And all I could say to that was touche, Nate. Because, I mean, she did. She really did. She said, I feel X, Y, and Z, not I felt. Or this is how I, the, some of the ways I've been feeling this in this past week, within this past week. I may not be feeling all these things right now, but I want to address them while we're here with you. Like, it was none of that. She did. She said, I feel X, Y, and Z. And so, um, <clears throat> sorry, y'all. He says he's getting to the point um, that trying to prove himself is not for him. He's about to be over, basically. So, Stasha says, all the things you're saying are future action. Like the, I'm going to go to therapy. I'm going to move in with you. So, she said what she needs in the moment, though, versus looking ahead to future actions is for him to communicate and be vulnerable. <clears throat> He's like, well, you say you want emotion and now you had it. Are you happy? I said, well, damn, man, he really done got a little pissy. He really pissed off. Y'all, I was like, mm-mm. So then he ends up, he says, and I don't think it's a me thing. I think it's a you thing, baby. He got up and left off the couch. <laughs> I said, well, damn, you know that her, you know that her Sasha's feeling. So, uh, <clears throat> over to, uh, Ben and Morgan, y'all, we see the little apartment cam, right? So Morgan is saying to Ben, Alexis told me everything. And at this point, we don't get to see what Alexis told her woman to woman that she says. She came to me woman to woman. Okay. <laughs> Brr, hello. <laughs> no, let me not say it. <laughs> woman to woman. Okay. Anyway. But she said, oh, that Alexis came to her woman to woman. And we don't know what was saying. Said, you know, they're going to leave us with a cliffhanger. But apparently the only thing we got from her professional is that Ben has been lying about her behind her back to the other couples. Right. And I was just like, at this point, I don't, I don't really believe Morgan. I just said, you know, I'm not gonna call her a lie because she could be, she could be telling the truth. But I'm just saying, from what I see right now, I think she probably over exaggerating some things. But we shall see. We shall, shall uh, see, because we also know that she got a little lying problem herself. So anyway, y'all, that was the end of the episode, baby. This was a good episode, y'all. It was, but y'all. Next week. Do you hear me? Next week. I'm waiting on that one, baby. I'm coming for you. Y'all, that preview, it was too hyped up. It was too hyped up. Y'all, uh, 
Ben tried to give Morgan some flowers, baby. She ain't even touch her. She let him drop on the floor. Like, I said, well, duh. <laughs> but anyways, y'all, thanks for taking the time to listen. Let's get in them comments. Let's talk about some things. Hit on some aspects. What stuck out to you? What was your favorite part? And always, wait a minute. Before I sign out, y'all, please take a moment. I'm going to pause. Let y'all hit that like button. Let y'all hit that subscribe button. All right, y'all. We gonna end this thing. As always, I'm gonna pray for you all, my viewers. You all, please pray for me. And we will continue to watch God change things. All right. Love y'all. See you next time. Bye.